Hey everybody, it is Thursday, August 22nd. I'm just here with some Proto School updates. So the biggest thing we shipped this week, which we're really excited about, is adding some metrics that are going to allow us to better understand user behavior, which will help us shape the content that we build in the future. So we've done a few things. We switched our analytics for the site from Google Analytics to a system called Countly, which addresses a lot of privacy concerns. And the other thing we've done as part of that transition is made it possible, even though we build ProtoSchool in Vue, which is a single page application, we've made it possible for the system now to distinguish between the things we think of as pages. So it can tell the difference between specific lessons, what tutorial someone is on. And then starting from there, in addition to the normal things you'd expect, like page views, we're also now um, taking note when someone completes a lesson or a tutorial. We're tracking specific events, not, not down to the detail of who that person is, but making sure we know how many people, for example, have had to reset the code on a specific lesson or have submitted code that's wrong compared to how many times they've submitted code that's right. Those kinds of things. Um, so I'll just give you a quick look at... Uh, quick look at some examples of the kinds of things we could see here. This data is actually mostly test data because this has only been live for a few days, but this will help to just see the kinds of things we can look at. So for example, on the left here, you have tutorials passed. You could see, for example, this many people have passed the basics tutorial versus the data structures versus the mutable file system. Um, in this case, it's not necessarily popularity. It could be just how many people can manage to succeed at passing them, um, but that's useful information for us. We also have the ability to look at just a specific tutorial. So for example, this one was taken using the blog tutorial and look at the number of people who have passed each specific lesson within that tutorial. So you might see, for example, that you know, lessons one through six were passed evenly and then there was a big drop off for lesson seven. So something in lesson seven is too hard. It's kind of, kind of data we're trying to look for that is actionable. Um, these are some more of those lesson passed ones. We can look at um, the wrong choices that people have made. I actually have a better view of this elsewhere, but we have set it up so that we can see that if the, the right answer for a particular multiple choice option is the, the second one in the list, we can see that the most popular wrong answer was number one or number three in the list. Um, just to give us a better sense of like what those common misperceptions are. We can, this is a, the best view of it, but we can compare the numbers of folks who are passing failed code or wrong multiple choice answers or resetting the code compared to how often they pass a certain lesson. Again, to give us a sense of how hard that content is. Um, we can look at this is the, just a different format of who's passed by a specific path. We can look at our new users with, you know, we'll usually see spikes around launches or events. So we might see a spike from a certain area of the world when a specific chapter was hosting a meeting, um, specific lessons that are passed. Um, we also have the ability to see heat maps of where people are clicking on the screen. We can see scroll maps to see how far down a page someone looks. All of this helps us build better content. So we're really excited to, to take that as we plan our next content and see what's popular, what's working well for people, where we might need to put time into fixing up the, the lesson content to make it easier for people to pass lessons, all that kind of stuff. What have I missed here, Diego? So yeah, I think you covered it pretty much. Yeah. So we're also, really. Go ahead. Uh, this is just not well. It's basically more for us. But if you guys want to create a new tutorial, we may probably share some analytics with you too to check if your new tutorial has been uh, having a good engagement or not, or what what you can tweak or not. So this helps on the content front too. Yeah, I think what we're likely to do is kind of set a regular schedule for looking at the data and kind of analyzing how things are going with different tutorials. So, um, yeah, so that's the big thing we're excited. We've been working on this for 
for many weeks and different, different folks. Uh, Diogo and I both did a lot of this work and we had help from Ollie who helped us set up the Countly instance and Michael who got our domain switched over. So we're really happy to have this ready to help influence future decisions and help us see how many people are taking advantage of the site in general. Um, and then Diogo, do you want to share the project that you've been working on this week? Uh, yeah, I can talk a bit about it. I'm not going to, to share my screen because okay. it's not and yeah. But uh, we're trying to, to create a new feature. It's a bit under the hood. We don't want it to, to be something that you guys are always having to do. It's basically create renaming a new tutorial because right now how everything is hooked up, we have lots of ways of how we can check the tutorial name, tutorial license, the titles, the paths. There, there are a lot of, of strings that make protoschool work, let's uh, put it that way. And for example, if you guys submit a new tutorial and it gets upset, accepted and it gets published, right now we don't have any way to change the names. Uh, for example, the, the tutorial name, the tutorial name, and you have then the shop name and the paths, you can't easily change that. And the main reason for that, I'd say, it's, uh, as you guys know, we have like progress in ProSchool. The user can see which lessons he already passed, uh, which uh, he's still on progress, and we save their, their code and everything like that. Uh, right now, if we try to change a tutorial name, basically it's like as the, if the user had never touched that tutorial. So he comes back to Pro School, he goes to your tutorial, and he says if it's new. Uh, right now we're working on a tool to migrate uh, everything. So how, how it works right now is we, we save everything on local storage, the cache code and what, what lessons the user passed or not. Right now we're building a tool that allows you to rename uh, the tutorial that is renaming the, the path and the tutorial name. So that step is a bit simpler. You just now choose a URL and uh, it gets derived to a short name. And apart from that, we're migrating all the local storage and you want to change a tutorial name. So now you're able to change a name of a tutorial, change the lesson titles, and when the user comes to Pro School, everything uh, is as it were before. So if he has progress on your tutorial, it will still, still be that way. So it's a bit hard to explain. It will be easier in the readme. We're, we're, we're working on that. But uh, keep in mind, as I said, it's not a feature that we want people to always be using. We don't want you to submit a tutorial and each day uh, being uh, wanting to rename it. So, but it's uh, nice to have. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to be a an, something that's infrequently used, but it kind of positions us for future growth and the fact that we might look back and realize we made a mistake in the way we named something, but we don't want to disrupt the user experience. So this lets us deal with a bunch of stuff under the hood um, mm -hmm. and make sure the user can, can keep track of their progress, which is one of the things we really like about the platform. So thanks for all your work on this, Diogo. And for anyone who hasn't heard, Diogo's leaving the project at the end of the week to move on to something else fun. So uh, it's been awesome working with you. Very happy to have had all of your help. Um, and let's see, anything else you wanted to update anyone on, Diego? Mm, I don't think so. We may, as always, every week, we always do some small fixes. Lots of little stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not really uh, worth showing it, but at least you guys know we're always uh, getting for the school by it. So. Yeah, I guess the other thing that I started doing, um, which is very much a work in progress, is adding, we, we have the instructions for building a tutorial in terms of do this to this file, do that to that file, here's how you validate your code. But the thing that we've been missing is like, what makes a good tutorial, like breaking down concepts into little chunks or using accessible vocabulary, those kinds of tips, that's something that's been missing. So I'm working on building out documentation to add um, to the readme or a file next to it or something. Um, that will give people good tips there. Um, so that's something that's coming up. And the next thing that I'm working on is looking at the various content from IPFS camp. First step is look at it and see what makes sense to fit into ProtoSchool. What formats would it be? 
how would we chunk out the content into new lessons or how would we add some cool diagrams or explanations that someone used at IPFS camp into an existing tutorial. Um, so I'm doing that kind of first pass at evaluating things and then later in the quarter or into the upcoming quarters, we'll be looking either myself or any volunteers out there to, to take those plans and turn them into new tutorials. I think there's going to be a lot of great content that came out of IPFS camp and it's just a matter of putting in the time to get the format to work. Um, and certainly there will also be content from IPFS camp that doesn't fit well inside of Proto School, but that people could use in other formats, right? So there, are, there will be videos of core courses that we can link to from our resources pages. There will be sessions that don't make sense in Proto School, but that maybe a leader of an IPFS meetup or a Proto School chapter might one week want to give a, give a talk, not in Proto School workshop format. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of material to use there. So we're looking forward to bringing you more on that front. Um, and then also we want to document a little more of what it's like to lead a Proto School workshop, what works well in terms of who's standing at the front of the room, what you need to think about in terms of the equipment that you need or how many instructors you need per attendee or vice versa. Um, so that kind of documentation will end up living in the organizing repo and hopefully I can get help from some of my current chapter leaders to pull all that stuff together. So we're improving documentation in a number of spaces and then building all the groundwork for future content. So it's kind of stuff we're working on at the moment. And I think it's probably it for today. So hope to see some of you next week. Oh, actually not next week, vacation next week. I'll add a note in the issue. <laughs> we'll call off the meeting because I won't be here and Diego won't be here for other reasons. So um, yeah, but I'll be on the vacation. first, yes. Oh, perfect. It's a good way, to, good way to wrap things up. So everyone take vacation next week from photo school and then we'll be back the first week. I'll be back the first week of September. So I will see you then. Bye everybody. See you guys.